I'm seven years old, and I'm playing outside in the front yard with my friend. And from in house, inside the house, I can hear my grandfather's voice, and it's echoing down the hallway. He says his piece, and I reply, yes, granddad, and I just carry on playing. And my friend turns to me and says, oh, man, are we in trouble? Like, is everything okay? What did he just say? I was a little bit confused. My grandfather's vocabulary was just as clear to me as my friend's. And what my grandfather had said was, Brina, Brina, away you there. Now leave here with nothing on a belly. My grandfather just wanted to make sure that we didn't leave the house hungry. But because his phrasing and language was unfamiliar to my friend, my friend was a little bit surprised and concerned. And that's when I realized there was this divide between language and culture. You see, in our home, when a friend came over to play with me or my siblings, our parents and grandparents would treat that child just as if they were their own. Well, kind of minus the West Indian licks. <laughs> but because what my grandfather had said was not intended for my friend's ear, my friend was taken a little aback. Isn't it funny with misunderstanding and misinterpretation how a scenario can be so different and how it can create such a big divide? And it planted the seed in me that I was born to, like some of us feel, as bridging either side of this divide. And as I grew up through high school, college, and university, I dealt with the things that came with the territory of being a black West Indian girl who was born and raised in London, then lived in Paris, and now America. These experiences continued up until about three years ago. I'm traveling through East Asia. I end up sitting under the statue of Genghis Khan. And I began having a conversation with the leader of the local BMX and skateboarding crew. And we started talking about how they keep their boards and rides within the community, our favorite music. I was even told about Mongolian rappers who were a definite for my playlist. But you want to know something about that conversation? They didn't speak English. I didn't speak Mongolian. We used our phones to communicate with each other by showing pictures and videos. It was just quicker for the pace of conversation that we wanted to have. Both of us feeling equal. Both of us really proud of our cultural truths. He was also so proud that his crew had been featured in Vogue magazine, but American Vogue, we high-fived each other in celebration. It was a wicked conversation, but it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the way we used to use technology to learn more about each other. And it made me think, how far are we truly pushing the boundaries in technology to create more moments of this nature? It's been 45 years since the mobile phone was introduced to the mainstream, and I think we can all agree that its capabilities have vastly improved. Everything that you want for work and play is constantly in the palm of your hand. It's the one piece of technology that is accessible to everyone. So what if mobile technology could transform activities we do on a phone every day to help bring us closer together? doesn't have to be a concept. I believe the small things we do on a daily basis could help unite people and bring communities together, no matter your geography, age, language, or communication style. One thing that I've learned in all of my experience is that when you're using, when you feel excluded, you feel a sense of sadness, feeling alone. But we have the technology at our fingertips to help us overcome that. Do you know how many people in this world own a mobile phone? Five billion. But that's five billion lives that could be transformed purely from taking an Android or a smartphone out of a pocket, touching a screen, and transforming the way you or someone you know or love engages with the world. Let me give you some examples. Imagine a QWERTY braille keyboard, but on a mobile phone. Using smart sensors, wouldn't it be just ace to allow someone who is visually impaired 
or someone who is blind to be able to text in the same way that those of us who carry all five senses could. It also eliminates the feeling of feeling excluded. Also, have you ever been to a live music event and you've seen a hip hop performer performing the heck out of a song, but also a sign language interpreter performing the lyrics to that song? Or maybe it's someone who's caught your eye, who's concentrating on the vibrations of a speaker. What if mobile technology on your phone could interpret sound data and transform that into beautiful imagery, thus allowing those people who are deaf or hard of hearing to experience music in a whole new way? Let's take a child who lives in a rural community. Maybe they live four or five hours away from their local school. Wouldn't it be just ace if the teacher could text that class to their phone and thus allowing them to have keywords being brought to life in beautiful animation? It's the same way when you text the word congratulations. That's also brought to life through balloons, lasers, or confetti. So many devices are being made to be of service. You have apps that help you pay bills. You can pay donations to your favorite charities. You can even create content for the gram or TikTok. All of these things to get us through our daily life with ease. But there's nothing wrong with that. But what if we changed the MO to create devices that are in service to one another? Somewhere along the line, the human experience has become far less important to the devices that we use every day. And I find that really ironic. Hardware and software created by humans for humans to use has advanced so far that the human experience has been left out of this advancement. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer to home. So my grandmother is a spitfire. She's 94 years old, but she can still give me a look that makes me feel like I'm five years old. And I would want her to have a feeling that she was constantly loved beyond the phone calls and FaceTime and WhatsApp conversations we have with each other. I'd use augmented reality to record a message in a virtual world that she could watch in the real world at any time she wanted. It's the same way if you've ever played Pokemon Go that you create an avatar and you're able to track that avatar in a real life location or in your local. Um, local city or town. When was the last time you heard the expression, um, I'm sorry, this doesn't translate, from Kazakh, Swedish, Spanish, Afrikaans, you take your pick, but without the use of a language app? What if you could use augmented reality on your phone to create a visual expression of that saying and thus retiring the phrase lost in translation? Multiple studies have shown that we are vastly disconnected from each other and we are very heavily tech dependent. But I believe that technology is the key and catalyst to change this relationship. A mobile phone is perfect for this, something that we all own within our grasp, that we have the autonomy and power to help create social equality and inclusion helping each other thrive for the better, particularly marginalized communities. I believe the connections that we make with each other go far beyond a transactional exchange of information. I believe that our connections should and could be motivated by the relationships we want to deepen and strengthen with one another, helping us to understand each other more, maybe decreasing feelings of isolation or sadness, perhaps even decreasing feelings of isolation and also conflict on a global scale. When I was six years old, my grandfather lost his leg to gangrene and he had an artificial leg. He was totally fine. But as he got older, it took a toll on his health. And when he moved back to the West Indies just before I went to university, his mobility in the house became less and less. When you don't live in the capital city in the Caribbean, finding Wi-Fi can be a little bit of a challenge. So that means that the smart home technologies that we know today, such as Alexa, can't always be the best option. 
granddad would benefit from a voice activated phone that he could physically pick up and turn on without actually having to move too much. And also we would feel far better knowing that we could contact him at any time that we wanted. Given the social and political climate of today, it's never been more important to recognize the small things that we could do to help us improve the way we relate to each other, maybe closing the divides that are being created as we know it. Instead of the standard list of technical benefits of a phone, I wish to see the creation of, of inclusivity specs. Show me the humanitarian impact that my mobile phone purchase will have on the world. I believe this is just as important as listing the memory storage or the quality of a screen display. Instead of having the way our mobile is used dictated to us, let's have a say in how we want to use it to promote social inclusion, building a world and society where no one feels limited or left behind. Connecting a phone's mobile design and purpose to the impact it has on someone's life should be a prerequisite. And the results of all these changes? A little less bias in the world, a little more inclusion, a little more thought to mobile innovation that can help improve the way we connect and relate and learn about each other. So I have a little challenge for you when you leave here. I want you to find someone who doesn't speak the same language as you, who is your parent, grandparent, maybe it's a younger sibling or someone that, who's younger than you that you don't know. Take out your phone and have a think about how you could use that phone to deepen and strengthen your relationship with them. Perhaps it's a video that you capture while they're opening up a gift that you've sent to them. Maybe it's voice notes that you've recorded for them that they can listen to while they'll fall asleep. You have so much technological power in the palm of your hands. Will you accept the responsibility to use it? I personally am really excited about the possibilities of technology that we, the people, the general public can use every day to help build a more inclusive world. And more importantly, let's build some social equality. And I invite you all to join me. Thank you.